During the 1976 and 77 seasons of the European Touring Car Championship, there was one car that dominated. It won the championship outright in 1976 and was runner-up in 1977. Of the 20 races run during those two years, it had seven poles, won nine races outright, as well as achieving four additional podium finishes. This short documentary will tell the story of the extraordinary performance of this unique car and its drivers, as well as the remarkable team that raced it. So let's travel back to the Autodromo Nacional de Monza for the first race of the 1976 season. Because this was the first race of the season, the Luigi team had only one car prepared. It would be driven by Jean Senseval and Pierre Dudonet. The car was fast right out of the box and qualified on pole. At the green flag, the Luigi BMW took the lead. The Wiesel Camaro soon passed the Zack Speed Escort and the Luigi BMW. The Camaro began to suffer fuel feed problems and finally had to retire, leaving the race win to the Luigi BMW. Not a bad beginning to the hopes of Team Luigi and their new car. Salzburg was the second round of the 1976 ETCC. Team Luigi had brought three BMWs this time, and they qualified first, second, and sixth. Several competitors had various issues. At the end, Team Luigi's BMWs filled the podium with chassis 001 finishing second. Round three was at the Autodromo del Mugello. The Luigi BMWs qualified 1, 2, 3 and were never really challenged. At the checkered flag, chassis 001 was the winner, followed by the other team cars. It was another Luigi-filled podium. Team Luigi brought three cars to the Mazeric ring in Brno, Czechoslovakia, for the fourth round of the championship. The team Zip Up Camaro qualified on pole, with two of the Luigi cars in second and third. At the green flag, the Camaro streaked away into an early lead, but suffered ignition problems and an oil leak and retired. The Luigi BMWs were never challenged after that. Chassis 001 crossed the line in a 1-2 finish for Luigi. The next two races were the biggest races of the year. First, was the Grosser Prix der Tourenwagen at the famous Nürburgring. Luigi brought in the ringmeister Hans Stuck to co-drive the number one car and Gunnar Nielsen to help with the number two car. Stuck put the number one car on pole with a lap of 8.47 and at the green flag headed off to an early lead with the number two car close behind. Unfortunately, the engine gave out after 14 laps, and the number one car was retired. The number two car went on to win, salvaging something for Team Luigi from the weekend. The 24-hour race at Spa Frankershamps was next. It was the crown jewel of the 1976 season. Spa was Team Luigi's home track, and they had enjoyed a great deal of success there winning the 24-hour race in 1974 and again in 1975. Again, they brought three cars to battle against the strongest field of cars they had seen all year. On pole was the very fast surge power BMW with the unreliable Team Zip-Up Camaro outside row one. Chassis 001 qualified third with chassis 002 right behind in fourth. Chassis 001 fell back at the start because Dudonet neglected to switch on both fuel pumps, so the car was starved for fuel. After a quick stop in the pits, he was back out running with full power and climbing through the field. Right from the start, there was a great battle at the front of the pack. Before the fourth hour, the Camaro was out with no oil pressure followed shortly by the number three Team Luigi car, which suffered damaged suspension. A few hours later, the pole-sitting Surge BMW damaged the crankshaft and was forced to drop out. 
This left the two Team Luigi cars in the lead as night fell. But neither car would see the dawn, as both cars suffered identical piston ring failures while leading the race. It was a disaster for Team Luigi. Unfortunately, Round 7 at the Autodromo Vallelunga was not much better to Team Luigi. The cars qualified in the first three places with chassis 001 on pole, but the race did not go very well. The 002 car suffered cooling issues throughout the race and finished a lowly ninth, while chassis 001, forced to make repeated stops due to engine issues, managed to come home just off the podium in fourth. The eighth round of the championship was at Silverstone in Great Britain, and the mighty Jaguar XJ Coupe finally made its debut by qualifying on the pole by a full second over chassis 001. It finally looked like Team Luigi may have a serious challenger on their hands. Here's how the race unfolded. Incredibly, for a first outing, it secured pole position, beating every other car on the track, including the apparently invincible BMWs, by two seconds a lap in the pre-race heats. This tourist trophy at Silverstone is not one of the longest of the European calendar, just over 300 miles, but it is one of the more testing. For 14 laps, the new Jaguar looks superb, holding off everything. Then, disaster. The near rear side tyre blew and Leyland's top driver, Derek Bell, was forced to crawl nearly an entire lap to reach the pits for an incredibly fast change. But, though she roared away again, there was no way to make up four lost laps and, in the event, the drive shaft, weakened by the earlier puncture, finally threw the whole wheel off on the 40th lap and only superb driving prevented a major accident. The deadly BMWs went on to win, but Jaguar, with the fastest lap of the race to its credit, is convinced it has a potential winner for the European Tourist Trophy Championship when it reopens next year. The last race of the season was outside of Madrid, Spain, at the Harama Circuit. Team Luigi again dominated, qualifying with chassis 001 on pole and the other two team cars in second and third while chassis 001 finished first for its fifth win of the year. The championship was theirs. At the end of the 1976 season, championship-winning chassis 001 was bought by Martino Finotto. Finotto was a well-respected privateer who had bought drives with Team Luigi several times during the 1976 season. For the 1977 season, Finotto teamed up with his friend Carlo Fassetti. Together, these Italians hope to take Chassis 001 to another championship. The first race of the new season was again held at the Autodromo Nacional di Monza. The event had a promising entry for the first race of the season. Jaguar was there with two cars. Team Luigi had one car ready to go, and Alpina brought their new Gosser Beer BMW. Qualifying was a problem for Jaguar. Though they put their car on pole, they blew two motors leading up to qualifying and only started one car. The Alpina BMW was second and chassis 001 qualified third with the Team Luigi car fourth. At the green flag, the Jaguar streaked off and built a big lead. On lap two, the lone Luigi car holed a piston and pulled into the pits. The Alpina car blew a head gasket shortly after that, and the Jaguar suffered oil pressure problems and blew up in the second hour. Chassis 001 was the last man standing and went on to an easy victory. It was a great way for Finotto to start the year. Round two in Salzburg was a difficult weekend for Chassis 001. Still wearing its Castrol colors, owner-driver Finotto qualified well, but left the circuit in the rain and DNF'd. At Mugello, Chassis 001 arrived in its striking new UFO stripes. In qualifying, the Alpino BMW was quickest, with Chassis 001 on the outside of row one. In the race, the Alpina BMW blew its engine after one and a half hours. 
This left the three Luigi cars at the front, with no real challengers. The number three car suffered an accident about halfway through the race. Chassis 001 finished three laps down to its sister car, but the finish moved Finotto and Facetti into the lead in the Drivers' Championship. A new race was added in 1977 at Autodromo di Pergusa in Sicily, Italy. The venue certainly agreed with the two Italians driving chassis 001 as they qualified on pole, led the entire race, and drove to a narrow victory over their teammates. At the Miseric Ring, Brno, Czechoslovakia, chassis 001 suffered an engine problem in practice that required a complete rebuild in the back of the truck. The Jaguars were back in force and locked out the front row. The Alpina BMW and 001 were on row 2, with the other two Luigi cars in row 3. Both Jaguars suffered issues in the race, but the stubborn mechanics managed to nurse one of the cars to a 16th place finish, their first of the year. The Alpina BMW was leading and looked to be a certain winner until one and a half hours from the end when it blew its engine. Finotto and Facetti didn't let their problems in practice bother them as they drove a steady race and took the checkered flag four laps ahead of the second team Luigi BMW. A large field turned up for the Grosser Prix der Tourenwagen at the Nürburgring. One of the Jaguars was on pole with the Alpina BMW outside. Chassis 001 qualified third along with the other red and white Luigi cars. The pole sitting Jaguar blew its engine on the first lap, handing the lead to the Alpina BMW. The fast green car never looked back and went on to an easy victory. The second Jaguar struggled the entire race but managed to finish second. Chassis 001 had a problem with the diff and dropped out early, while the other Luigi team cars could only manage 4th and 14th place finishes. The new venue of Zandvoort was next on the calendar. Finotto and Facetti put Chassis 001 on pole on a wet and cold track. The Alpina BMW was outside and the Jaguar and Sister Luigi car were on row 2. The start of the race featured a great battle between the Alpina BMW and one of the Jaguars. Unfortunately, the Jaguar overheated its rear tires and fell back through the field to finally retire. Chassis 001 then took up the chase and ran with the Alpina car until the engine blew two hours from the finish. The Luigi team car finished second with the surge power BMW third. Another DNF awaited Chassis 001 at the next round at Silverstone. Another blown engine came as a huge disappointment and allowed the Alpina BMW to move into the championship lead with a crucial victory. The Jaguars locked out the front row in qualifying for their home race, but only managed a fourth and a DNF for their efforts. The other two Luigi cars finished second and third. Round 9 introduced another new venue at Zolder in Belgium. Unfortunately, Finotto and Facetti's luck didn't change. They only managed to qualify 6th and dropped out after the first hour with suspension failure. The Alpina BMW took another win, increasing their lead in the championship. Only two races remained in the season, and at Harama, Team Luigi put it all together and finished 1-2-3 with chassis 001 in third, but finishing ahead of the Alpina BMW. All was not lost in their championship fight. The last race of the year was at the Autodromo do Estoril in Portugal. The Alpina BMW won the pole with the Luigi cars second, third, and fourth. The Jaguars stayed home, so it was an all-BMW event. 
During the race, the weather changed several times, necessitating more than the usual number of pit stops. It looked like the Alpina BMW would take the win, but in the closing stages, with darkness falling, the battery in the Alpina car began to give up, and Facetti took chassis 001 into the lead, with only a handful of laps remaining. It was a great way to end the year, but not enough points to dislodge the Alpina car from first place in the championship. They had to settle for runner-up, only six points behind the Alpina car. At the end of the season, Finotto sold chassis 001 and bought the Alpina Gosser Beer Championship car. Chassis 001 was bought by an Italian privateer named Alessandro Fracastoro. Alessandro campaigned the car in the Italian Touring Car Series, in hill climbs, and occasionally in ETCC races. Over the years, he repainted the car and added the factory wide-body fenders. The car continued its winning ways with several outright victories and many class wins. Number 001's final in-period race was the 1981 edition of the Trofeo Urat in Salerno, Italy. Following this event, number 001 was retired and placed in storage. In 1992, the car was found and purchased by Adolfo Peniza. Mr. Peniza is an avid collector of race cars, motorcycles, and memorabilia. Over the next year, he had the car completely restored by Luigi Moreschi Motorsports. During this restoration, the car was painted in BMW Motorsports livery. All of number 001's original factory motorsports parts were also retained on the car. Mr. Peniza raced the car several times between 1993 and 2001 in vintage races and hill climb events. The car was retired again to his collection in 2001. We purchased the car from Mr. Peniza in January 2014 and had it shipped to the U.S. It arrived at SeaTac Airport on January 28th. The challenging job of restoring the car was given to Jim Frula and Terry Forland at Racecraft in Woodenville, Washington. One of the great joys of the project was finding all the different layers of paint as the old bodywork was removed the bright UFO red, the castrol green, and the final layer we found was the original castrol black, a verification of the unique history of the car. The responsibility for rebuilding the engine went to Terry Tinney in Livermore, California. After Hours Customs was given the difficult job of converting the car back to Group 2 specs and duplicating the striking Castrol livery. We have enjoyed racing the car and showing it at a variety of events around the country since 2014. Chassis 001 continues its winning ways, both on track as well as on the show field. It is an honor and privilege to be the custodian of such a great piece of racing history. Our plans are to continue to share this amazing car with people over the coming years. We wish to express our sincere appreciation to those who have helped us along the way.